the Ticats hold the coveted number one overall selection. So we had to ask co-manager of football operations, Sean Burke, who is the team looking at taking to start the CFL draft? You're not on the draft list? <laughs> uh, no, no. Uh, you know, we're looking at uh, a few guys still right now, and uh, it's a really good draft, uh, top end wise. And we obviously got some clarity this weekend with what happened in the NFL in regards to four Canadians getting drafted and uh, multiple guys getting signed post draft. So it was, a, it was a great weekend for Canadian football, and uh, we're excited to continue the momentum tomorrow night. Is there a number of guys that are in the mix, or has the team narrowed it down to that target that they want at number one? Uh, we're, we're probably getting close to narrowing it down to the, the last couple uh, people that we would consider right now. So uh, uh, that's exciting to have more of a focus and uh, really uh, come to a decision together as a staff. And University of Virginia receiver Terrell Jana has been mentioned as the odds-on favorite to go number one. Does he fit the Ticats, and might he be the top choice? Well, I, I think when you look at Terrell, he's had a productive career at Virginia, and he, he's going to be a great CFL player. Um, uh, what we plan to do at that spot, uh, we'll see tomorrow night. What has the process been like with the Canadian University football season cancelled in 2020 and doing most, if not all, of your scouting virtually? It's it's been different, you know. You miss the in-person evaluation, seeing them live, seeing how they interact uh, uh, in a, f a format like uh, the combine. Just seeing who the guys step up into the drills and who who the vocal ones are and who are the guys that sort of sit at the back. So you, you miss that point. The good news is we did get a bit of a taste of it last year with having to to go through this more on the run last year and less prepared. Uh, I would say the players and agents were, were better at being prepared of what the teams need uh, in terms of evaluating them and providing that. And I think the league's done a great job of trying to get as, as many resources as possible in a time where, you know, we had to stay put and couldn't have players coming in or us going to them. So, you know, it's just a different way of, of doing it. Uh, you know, we'll probably keep some things moving forward of how we change our our process uh, by having to do it virtually and, uh, you know, some things you'll want to get back to normal with. How important is the CFL draft in building a Grey Cup championship contender? Well, the Canadians on your roster are, are a big time lifeline for your team. You know, we dress 21 weekly uh, and you have to start seven, as everyone knows. So uh, to have that content on your team and build that content through the draft, uh, you know, it enables you to have a competitive team year in and year out. So uh, Drew Alamang and Spencer Bohm uh, do a great job of having us prepared. And then Coach O and myself and the rest of the staff uh, come in and, and get involved. And we come to consensus, consensus together of what the best thing is for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. But without a doubt, Canadians on your roster uh, make a huge difference uh, in the success of your team. Are there any players, especially at the top end, that can come in and help the tie catch right away if football is played in 2021 and obviously with the team hosting the Grey Cup in December? Well, I think uh, what gets caught into things is in the NFL draft, it's a little different where, you know, their top end of their draft, you're, you're, you're hearing those guys can start from day one, whereas the jump in our league is a little different uh, uh, because of the ratio, because of the level of play. And, you know, you don't necessarily look uh, where they would be from day one of training camp. You look at where they could be down the road and uh, developing them. And it, it does take some time. So I don't think it'd be fair to, to put any pressure on any player in this draft of what the expectations are from day one. But what I can say is I do think this is a, a quality football draft that uh, top end has a lot of talent. Some of those players will be going back to NCAA schools to further uh, their careers down there. So it might take a little more time. And then you do have a, a pick of some guys that could come in and at, at minimum help uh, – your game day roster in terms of special teams or backing up positions. And, you know, what you ultimately want as a football club is competition at every position. And I believe there's lots of guys in this draft that can give competition from day one of training camp to start. Well, thank you very much, Sean, for your insight and perspective. And good luck at the draft. Thanks so much, Justin. Have a great night.